Replay viewers, this is a much better view of the Jersey Shore than yesterday. I came in here in the dark, so I finally get to see uh, see where I was. Uh, there's a whole bunch of dredge pipeline that I wasn't anywhere near, but I've been warned about. So this place is, uh, is I think, somewhat back in business. Um, when I arrived last night, oh my goodness, there were two, two cars for people fishing, blasting ghetto music. Uh, some, some venue had, had live music playing, and a party boat full of people about to become drunk was preparing to get under underway. I got in at, at, at 10 minutes after 8. So the, uh, the drunk boat probably left about 8.30. Guess how many people were wearing masks? That's right, zero. There's no pandemic in Atlantic City, apparently. So, oh well. But uh, the good news is all the commotion soon died out. And I sort of got asleep and took on some fuel. Just uh, really opened at 8. And here we are a little bit after 8. And the current's still coming in. Good morning, Greg. And I think I said good morning, Paul. The current's still coming in, so it was a bit of a slow trip to go out. But uh, as I told the girl at the gas dock, I'm not in any hurry. It's seven hours to Cape May, and when I get there, it's when I get there. And I think, I think the tide will just be low and the current coming in. So, so here and also in Cape May, hi Roddy. Here and here and also in Cape May, you want the tide with you, the current with you. Uh, otherwise. Otherwise, it's a slow trip. So I'm, I'm angling off. I'm going to be pulling away from the, uh, the beach. I have a waypoint ahead, quite a distance yet. Yeah, look at the view, and we can look back a little bit. See, I have, I have this thing, this awning in overhead. So that big, tall building, which is looking at it and edge on, is the most recent uh, casino. It's a giant ball on the top that lights up in various colors at night. I think it was very expensive to construct that. And then for whatever reason, they, uh, they couldn't open for years. The, uh, this used to be the only place to do gambling. Uh, Roddy, I only, did, I only did one scope along the New Jersey coast and it had, it had very few viewers and it was a grim, grim day. Yesterday morning, it was very cloudy, and I was far away from the beach. Nope, no fishing, just headed. This is not a fishing boat. This is, voila, it's a sailboat. So, so my scope with the New Jersey coast yesterday didn't, didn't quite work out, but here we have a sunny day, and there's actually something to look at. Not me. No, oh, you didn't miss your favorite scope. That was kind of a lousy, lousy quality one. I was so far from the beach because usually I go into Manasquan, which takes me right into the beach. But yesterday I was coming here, so I was farther offshore. No, it's not warmer. It's colder. I, I have my two jackets on. Uh, maybe not too much colder. Uh, it felt colder when I put my head out this morning. That's for sure. Um, and I met met two local men who were just arriving in a little little sailboat. Well, not too little, but little enough. Uh, didn't weigh very much. And they were stopping at the dock I was at to go up to get some pancakes, which sounded like a great idea. But then we had a little conversation, and and they've been to a very remote place in New Brunswick, Canada, which I would never think. Hi, Rich. I would never think somebody from New Jersey would, would even know about, much less visit. So that was that was very impressive. So here's here's a look back at the uh, at the bigger buildings. There's a Ferris wheel coming coming edge on. Of course, at night it's all lit up, and I wanted to scope it coming in, 
but my workload was was too high. I had to pay close attention to the radar and, and not hit any of the channel markers. Most of the channel markers are lit up, but the ones that aren't, you don't want to run into. So and then, then I got into the channel and it was time to put out the fenders and, and set up my lines. So, so that's the, the only trouble about being by yourself is you can only do one thing. No, no scoping and arriving in the dark. And also this boat has, has this overhead overhead top so it's it's not easy to uh, scope when you're by yourself. Go to Wildwood. I never heard of Canadians going to Wild why would Canadians want to go to Wildwood? My phone cable microphone cable back. So we're we're slowly pulling away from the coast. This won't this scope won't go on for for too long. Yeah I think the pier is is we're looking at it. I haven't been to Atlantic City in a long time. They used to have a sailboat show. And I came here twice for the sailboat show because at the sailboat show you get very, you know, it's worth the trip because the prices are so much less if you're buying a lot of expensive things. And I bought a sewing machine and a radar. I think those were the two big items, but I had a, a few other things. This was ages ago, so I don't remember. I still had the sewing machine and and the radar, I don't have. It wore out. Uh, yeah, Greg, I, well, the top part, that's always, I could push it back, but I, I never do. And I almost always have the windshield. So you can see how the windshield zips up. I almost always have that zipped up. Because it's just nice to be out of the wind. I, I never realized what I was missing until I had it. In my other boat, I didn't have a top, I didn't have a windshield, and I would normally have a lot more jackets on and, and suffer. Uh, the only plus about my other boat was I could sit down and still see where I was going. <laughs> In this boat, there's, here's the seat. If I stand back here and sit down, you really can't see where you're going. It's just, uh, just too tall. So, yeah, I'm very, very spoiled for my little windshield. But oh my goodness, some boats have more than just a windshield. They have, they have plastic all the way around. That's 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 the next step up, and that keeps the the wind out. You know, it seems a bit strange that you're in a sailboat and you want to keep the wind out. But if you're going when it's really breezy or a storm or the rain. So, so yesterday morning I'm going along and a little bit of rain came and it's blowing in on my legs. I'm getting soaked and it's not warm. Uh, Greg, I just, I either stand up, uh, I do have a stool um, and I could, I could place the stool back, back there and sit on it. And you can only do that when it's very calm. If it's rough, then, then no, because you'll, you'll, you'll fall off. Uh, but where it's wide, like like what I've done with this scope today, I'm going to put my radar on. And I'm just going to watch the radar. And every 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 so often, like every minute or two, I'll stand up and look around just in case the radar misses something. Very small boats, if it's rough, don't get don't get picked up. Today, obviously, it's not rough. It's yesterday was wonderful for going along. And looks like today is wonderful too. This is, it, it's an extremely rare case where I can do the coast of New Jersey and not get beat up at least once. So um, six, seven, seven fall, seven, seven plus. It, it, it took about 30 minutes to get out to sea against the current. So the sailboat show used to be over here. I think it was in that, that hangar-like building. Uh, Roddy, the, the bed was was a waste of $2,000. Uh, the, I had a custom bed made when I first got this boat because I was determined to have, have a better bed. And, and the piece I, I tested in the uh, office, they had, little, they had a section you could lay down on and it felt good. And then when the thing was delivered, it was too soft. And, and they, wouldn't, they wouldn't do anything about it. So 
the too soft bed will will go to the next person. Um, so as kind of an emergency measure, I got the cushions that I used to use kind of as a couch from my old boat, and I beefed up the foam on one of them because it was getting soft. And so now my bed's in the middle of the boat, and it turns out that's a better place to have a bed because all you have to do is, is swing your legs off to the side and stand up, and there you are. If the bed's up in the front, yeah, I just passed Brigantine. If the bed's up in the front, you have to, to squish around, scooch around, and, and, and hop down. And this bed up in the front is so tall that if you're not tall yourself, you need a step stool just to get up to it. And where I sleep now, there's just more air, especially on a hot day, hot night. Thank you for all those hearts, Karate. I think Paul's sending me hearts too. So, yeah, well, uh, yes, I, I have been sick a few times, and it's always nice to, nice to make a dash for the sink or, or, or the bucket. But we don't need to talk about that. Uh, I haven't been seasick in quite a long time, but one reason I, oh my goodness, do I use the solar panel? Well, sure I use the solar, I don't have a choice. They're, they're there and they're turned on. The solar panels are, 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 I have too many solar, this is a strange statement, but I have too many solar panels. Now, if, if I was a normal person, and I'm certainly not always a normal person, if I put the refrigerator on and had stuff in it, then I would want the solar panels as they are. But for what I'm doing, I probably could get away with, with like one solar panel or even half of, half of one solar panel. Uh, I, I use very little electricity. Um, my refrigerator, this boat, the previous two owners put a lot of money into this boat, but they didn't quite think things through. And so, so things were done about 90%, right? And like, why didn't you do it a little better? Um, so, so the refrigerator is, is, is completely, well not completely wrong, I mean it does make things cold. But the thing that makes them cold is at the deepest part of the refrigerator. So everything, and the refrigerator bottom is a slanted bottom. So everything you put in there slides to the deepest part, hits up against the thing that makes things cold, and freezes which doesn't seem to be well thought out unless you all you want to do is make some very warm ice uh, my friends with the same boat got a different kind of refrigerator and and the thing that makes things cold in theirs is, is on the slanted part but way up in the corner so you put your food in the deep part and the cold air comes down and bobs your uncle so so, like, why didn't you? I understand they bought what was available, but, but you can. Yes, it is. It, it's chilly. I have on two coats. Um, so there's all kinds of little odd things about this boat that that I fixed most of them, and it's not worth the effort to, to change the refrigerator. Uh, I can't put anything in the back because it all slides down. So, so there's going to be definitely some stuff down at the bottom. And the thing that makes things cold isn't at the bottom most part of this, this slanted box. So, so things can roll underneath and it's just not, it's just not done right. Um, the other thing that wasn't done right is, <clears throat> let's see if I can get over to this side. So here's the, uh, here's the sail. And you can see that I have two jibs. You can see the little staysails rolled up. This, uh, this jib in the front also rolls up. And the thing it rolls up on, yes, it works, it works, except when you pick the anchor up, the, uh, the starting part of the anchor, where the chain hooks up, hits the bottom of the thing that rolls and dents it. And, and if it, hits, it gets hit enough times, then, then the dented part starts to scrape and the thing doesn't doesn't roll too well. So then you have to go take a big screwdriver and pry it apart until the next time. Hi Polly, good morning to you. 
So for people just joining, we'll, we'll give you a view of the, the coast. I, I would probably have to replace the entire roll of furling because of that poor choice. It's, it's just the wrong style. They could have bought a different brand and, and had, the, had the drum that, that takes the rope higher off the deck. Uh, my own boat had that style. Uh, this style has, and, and what they've also had to do is they had to add extensions to the bottom of the jib to reach the, to reach the drum that takes the rope. So, like, oh my goodness. What were you thinking? So this, this scope is slowly winding down. I'm pulling away from the coast. Uh, no one's asked how fast I'm going. I'm going 6.3 knots. I should be going at least six and a half. Um, probably means I need to tighten in my jib a little bit, but I'm busy, busy talking to you guys. And I'll tend to the jib shortly. How's my course? My course is good. And, and this, is, this is the section of New Jersey that I like the most because it's only seven hours. Uh, oh, this boat's definitely faster. I, Roddy, I think I averaged, and I, I did a huge trip yesterday. It was like almost 80 miles. And I think I averaged 6.4 knots, which, which is incredibly fast uh, for, for a, whole, a whole day. Um, when I started out, I had about 40 minutes of seven. Well, I started out slow because the tide was coming in, but I had a little while of seven knots, or 7.2. But to average 6.4 is very impressive. I was traveling with, with boats. I could see them in front and, and behind me. And oh, the, old, the other boat, the other boat would motor at 5.6 and sail at 6.0. And 6.0 was the max. And as I got into, into surfing conditions, which I hoped would never happen. This boat was in surfing conditions last year. And I don't think I'll ever do that again. Um, this boat, I think the, I'd have to look at my notes, but this boat will, will max out at seven knots. And after the, the escapade last, last year, 12 months ago, I looked at my GPS and I think I'd hit 13. It was at least 12, was, I think it might've been 13. So, so that was one big monster wave that I was just plunging, plunging down and almost, and almost doubled my speed. The engine, engine turns on and goes. And that's that's all I care about. Um, in let me think. I think I think in 15 hours I'm due for an oil change. So when I get to Cape May, should I do an oil change 10 hours early, or or go tomorrow and do it when I get somewhere? I'll look at my oil. I do an oil change every 100 hours, and every 200 hours I change the filter, the oil filter. And one thing I learned the hard way is there's also a filter for the fuel and I never was told to change it. I don't know anything about diesel motors. I, this is a new boat. So last year it plugged up and the engine quit in a bad place and I got it restarted and, and fortunately my destination was, was only a mile or so away. Um, so I, I learned how to change it then and I didn't go much farther. And I got out of Florida, I got into North Carolina, and it quit again. I said, oh, oh, frickin' crack. But at least I knew what to do. And now the, uh, the, the fuel filter's on a replacement schedule. So I'll probably change it when I get to Florida. So you see, I'm pulling away from the coast. I only have four, four people, five people. So I'm gonna scope out. Now that I, was, I, need to, I need to tighten my jib up, it's, it's, it's not doing very much. But what a lovely day. And, and I think I, ha I had a friend, we were anchored in the same place a few nights ago. And he, he left the day before I did. And he's trying to go into this wind. And I hope he's not having a, a bad time. It's a, little, it's a little much to be going up Delaware Bay. But I'll, I'll check on him. He has a, a spot tracker. And I can, I can call up the bookmark and see where he's at. So everybody, uh, have a good morning. Farewell from, from Atlantic City. There's a, a final view of all the casinos. 
and we'll catch you next time. It was the water cleaner. Uh, I don't notice it. It's it's kind of it's kind of murky around here. Um, it's often very murky. You know, I'm near the shore, so so there's going to be stuff washing off the beach and and water coming out of rivers. So it's muddy. So take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.